Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today's video is brought to you by the Patreon. And we have the debut full length from Abhorrency on Stitch and Black Hand. I think Goat Throne Records did the CD, but Stitch and Black Hand did the cassette, as well as the demo tape. Maggot Stomp did the 7 inch of this bad boy, but I always loved the Stitch and Black Hand cassette version as you have Side True and Side False. I just always thought that was kind of neat because Side False is blank and Side True has three tracks, but the program does repeat itself. So I just thought that was cool as shit and I remember being kind of surprised like huh like Maggot Stomp signed a bestial black death metal band like cool but yeah Abhorrency play savage bestial black death metal with an emphasis on the death metal but also, it's evil as shit. Like, wow, this is vicious. It's completely exceeded my expectations. Because, just, wow. Like, for one, the drum sound on here is just as good as it gets, in my opinion. Like, it's just so tight. So, Hales the Sex Slayer, who's on drums. I do not know his real name. Like, we have Upheaver on guitar and vocals, Ejaculator on bass. Like, really, really sick dudes, like, when it comes to playing this style of tunes. Like, but I want to know what other projects these three gentlemen are in. Because this shit rules. Like, it really does. And they're sponsored by a fucking gym. That's how you know this is no joke. Like, no nonsense. Sponsored by Untamed Strength Powerlifting and Strongman Gym. Sacramento, California. So keeping the Ross Bay, like, powerlifting, you know, war metal vibe alive and well. And, yeah, like, Abhorrency, like, especially when they do, like, a lot of, you know, like, war metal bands, they'll do this, like, build-up of, like, blast beats where it's kind of like... Like, it kind of gradually builds itself up, but, like... Then you have bands like, you know, Revenge, where, like, the drums are kind of, like, the main point of, like focus and it's like kind of ridiculous honestly because there's a couple of bands that do that shit that don't get like the credit they deserve and <clears throat> if you know what this is yeah probably one of the best that no one talks about got to see them live twice which was fucking ridiculous <laughs> neither time they did they have merch but just wow Climax of disgusting impurities. It's on like a clear smoke brown tape, I think. Or tan. I'm kind of colorblind, but that looks like kind of whiskey, like the color of whiskey, 
but super sick. But when it comes to abhorrency, climax of disgusting impurities, there's not much to say if you know what best deal black death metal is. Because holy shit do they play it well. Like, especially if you're a fan of like Weregoat, you're gonna love this. Because like I said, it's kind of more death metal than anything else but those other elements are also there it's fucking great i mean he's got the revenge t-shirt on can't really tell what shirt the other yeah i can't really tell which the other two are wearing but i'm honestly surprised i don't see a blasphemy t-shirt but uh yeah this shit you know is badass like for real it's like right up my alley and like sometimes you know there's only so many bands you can listen to of this style until it's like all right this all sounds the fucking same but it doesn't like no you kind of have to be have a little open ear sometimes like yeah sometimes it does all kind of sound the same but then, you know, to me, like, you hear something like Conqueror and, like, that drum sound, it's been copied so many times, but has never really been, you know, as sick as it was on War Cult Supremacy. I just think, like, there's certain releases, like, you might prefer the Blasphemy demo. And I understand completely, but, you know, Fallen Angel of Doom... I fucking love it. Like, but also, yeah, Upon the Altar, really fucking good. But, like, you know, that's one of those releases where I do like listening to the demo, but, like, I prefer the full length. And, like, even with, like, Sarcophago, I, NRI, like, uh, I really, really love the demo compilation I have that leads up to that. Like, it's super fucking raw, but like, I just really love the way those songs sound pre INRI. But like, INRI sounds great, and uh, if you don't own a copy of this, Grey Haze Records kind of keeps this readily in stock. It's always available. I mean, the brown cover might not be but, like, like, even my LP version, I don't have the brown cover. I have the, the all-color one, but it doesn't matter. It plays the same music. But Grey Haze Records keeps that shit in stock, like, because it's an important release. Like, I wish more record labels would do stuff like that. Like, to me, you know, like, Napalm Death from Enslavement to Obliteration should always be available. Like, it should never not be, like, in print. Morbid Angel, Altars of Madness, like, Death, Scream, Bloody Gore, like, that should not be, like, a limited release. That should always be available. Like, the way, you know, fucking, if you want Metallica, Master of Puppets, Black Album, you can go get that whenever you want. I feel like we have classics and death metal that barely get a reissue from, like, the 90s. Like, those Deicide LPs. I know they're doing that box set and shit, but that's, like, $200. Are you even selling those records, like, on their own? Like, I hope so. Because, like, I don't know, shit like that just kind of bugs me sometimes. It's like, all right, like, Roadrunner, you got, like, Slipknot and, like, all that boof-ass shit, like. But you're also sitting on, like, a gold mine of classic death metal releases and even black metal releases. Like, let that shit out. 
because you're not doing anything with it. Like, and it's great when listenable records gets their hands on those like Roadrunner releases. Like, the reason those fucking Suffocation records got reissued was because listenable records got the rights from Roadrunner. And I don't know how, but you know they did, and it happened. Like Osmos doing the uh, Disastrous Murmur reissue of Raspides in red. Like, fucking awesome. And they did a great job on it. Like, it's a killer reissue. And, you know, I, I was surprised when I found this. Um, and this is a 2015 reissue. I remember grabbing it because... I didn't know when it was going to get reissued again. And right now, when it comes to something new, like Climax of Disgusting Impurities by Abhorrency, get a copy of this now, because when it sells out, fuck, it's going to be sold out. But I'm positive the vinyl version did not drop yet. I don't know who's handling the vinyl, but yeah. Yeah. I would love to have this on 12 inches of wax. It definitely deserves it. And yeah, as much as I love my Bestial Black Death on cassette, I also like it on vinyl. But Abhorrency Climax of Disgusting Impurities is just fucking gnarly. I love it. And thanks to Stitch and Black Hand... And I honestly, oh yeah, the Patreon, thank you so much for making that order possible. Because we got the new Abhorrency, and we got the uh, cassette version of Schism Perforation by Antichrist Siege Machine, uh, Last Days of Humanity, the sounds of rancid juices sloshing around your coffin. I know I need to go over this. But today I figured some of you might not know who Abhorrency are. And you really need to get your ears acquainted with Climax of Disgusting Impurities. Or start yourself off easy with the demo. And choke upon the pentagram and enjoy that shit. Turn it up. And you get a re-recording of Choked Upon the Pentagram, Sledgehammer Profanation, Warmaster Offensive, Cathedral of Fornication. Great song titles and great fucking savage bestial black death. Look at that cover art. That's all I have to say. Gnarly, gnarly shit. Cover art by Sylvia Palmarami. Great stuff here. Abhorrency. Sacramento, California. And as always, thanks for watching. You fucking rule. Hit up the Patreon if you want. You can also join the channel. Uh, we finally got approved for membership so hit that up thanks for watching as always halos <laughs>